That's what I want to talk to you about. Do not quench the Spirit's fire. Do not quench the Spirit. Now, here's something that has occurred to me al along the way, is that we have gotten perhaps so slick at our programming, and I, you know, I love um, all manner of uh, visual worship. I love that we use that. I like lighting. I like lots of things, but sometimes we can get so good at all of that that really the Spirit does not have to come because we just know what to do to get everybody going. And so I just, I decided I was just going to bring you a picture of a flame and let's talk about it for a moment. Here we've got a flame, but it's just really an image. It's not, it's not real. If I walk over to it, I could touch it and it's not hot. If we turn the lights off of it, it would not light up the room. I can get as close as I can with all my hair product. Nothing explodes. <laughs> Because the truth of it is, it's only just a picture. It's, it's only just a way to try to represent something that really does have heat to it, that really does have light to it. It gives the impression of fire, but actually that is not a real fire. It looks like a fire, but it's not hot. It's not light. And it sure does not purify. And I thought to myself, this is an odd thing because we forget about the purification of the fire, because when we picture how the Holy Spirit could act in our midst, somehow we're forgetting that He comes not only with heat, not only with light, but He comes to purify. Holy Spirit's not going to build up our flesh. He's not going to build up our egos. He's not going to make us look all cool. That's not how He does, because He comes and purifies. When the Holy Spirit is in the midst, there comes a humility, not a puffing up, but there comes a kneeling down. That is the true Spirit's fire. He comes, and He comes with order, but He comes with glorious freedom. Would we give Him the room to come and be a burning flame in our churches, in our personal lives? Do not quench the fire. 